Hey folks, your OS Reviews, you're watching our throwback review of the CoolPad N900. This is a phone that runs on the Windows CE 6.0 operating system, which is an OS that we rarely find on smartphones. Instead, we typically see Windows Mobile or Symbian, something like that, when this phone was released back in 2009. So it was an unlocked device that was priced at under $200, so it was fairly low cost, and in terms of design, it really was a phone that drew heavy inspiration from LG Chocolate series devices. So here's the Chocolate BL40. You can see the design has a lot of chrome accents and plastic parts, also a tapered flat top and also a base. And you can see that on this phone it seems like the design is quite similar in that sense. Even in how the camera lens has an etched chrome look is very similar to the BL40. So there's definitely heavy inspiration from, um, you know, LG that CoolPad, which is in a Chinese OEM, drew from. Accessories included a external charger. In addition to charging the phone using mini USB, you could charge up additional battery packs when you're on the go. And there's also an interesting synthetic leather case that was included as part of the value proposition. So definitely a classy looking phone that seems more expensive than it really is. So let's take a closer look at the design now. On the front here, there's access to a 2.8 inch TFT LCD display that uses a resistive touchscreen technology. Pretty common for a 2009 smartphone, especially in the Chinese market, which uses handwriting recognition as opposed to touching on a, on a physical keyboard. The top here uses access to a front-facing camera for video chatting and for uh, selfies. There's also a proximity light sensor next to the earpiece. Below, we have access to the CoolPad logo and a home key that actually doesn't turn the display on. You have to tap on the power key to bring up the display, which is a little bit unfortunate. It's not a fingerprint sensor, but it still feels pretty tactile and easy to tap on. There's also haptic feedback on this phone so that each time that you tap on a on-screen control, it vibrates the phone like you're actually tapping on a real key, which is a pretty nifty feature. On the side here, there's access to a lanyard strap next to the volume rocker, which is decently placed. The phone itself feels well constructed despite being made out of plastic since it feels uh, it doesn't creak or cringe and the corners are rounded to mold into your hands a little bit more comfortably. And there's also a telescopic stylus located on the hinge of the phone for bringing up the optional stylus. There's also a flap that covers up the mini USB port for charging, and there's also a dedicated power on off switch. The top features a status notification light. The back features a five megapixel autofocus enabled LED flash capable camera. And behind the battery door, there's access to two SIM card slots uh, for 3G connectivity. And there's also a micro SD card if you want to pop in some additional storage for media content. So let's take a quick look at the design. So the lock screen here has, has been customized by CoolPad to have this slide down animation, which is kind of interesting. Each time that you move around through the home screen, there is this kind of cube-like effect that spins, uh, which is unique. It seems like a launcher that we might find today on modern Android smartphones. And they definitely did a lot of work since Windows CE looks nothing like what you see here. It seems much more like a desktop operating system than something that's optimized for finger touch. So that's where CoolPad has done most of the software work. The top here features the notifications for your SIM card, battery status, and also airplane mode, which we are in currently, but I can tap and hold to swipe through these controls and have access to these, um, you know, without having to go through the settings and find them one by one. For instance, the battery, I can tap and hold here to have access to the indicator of how much battery is left and enter the power saving mode. Same thing with these other controls like handwriting recognition or the keyboard or the task manager that closes up my background apps when I'm not, when I'm not using it. So in terms of specifications, this phone is definitely, definitely outdated. It has a single core processor. And if we go all the way down into kind of general settings, we can see a bit more about the device. But you can see here that it has Windows CE 6.0 as the operating system. And in terms of the RAM, it's limited to 256 megabytes. And it runs on the Freescale processor, which is capped at around 300 megahertz or so, which is enough for the very light uh, tasks that this phone can complete, such as checking your emails, some very light web browsing, but um, anything more extensive or for gaming, it's definitely going to struggle just because the processor is nowhere near as powerful as modern day smartphones, but it works. The screen, despite being relatively small at 2.8 inches, actually is surprisingly decent as far as viewing angles are concerned for a traditional LCD panel that doesn't use OLED technology. Otherwise, if we take a quick look at the applications on here, there is a dedicated screen for your widgets, 
Again, very similar to LG and Samsung phones. I can swipe and drag uh, notifications and stuff like weather updates, news feeds, R RSS, news bulletins, and then pop them back into this tray when, it, when I'm not using it. One limitation is that you don't have the ability to add more widgets, so you're limited only to these four that they give you, which is a little disappointing. The next page gives access to commonly used programs like a dialer pad, a dialer log, there's a calendar, there's also what's called the Cool Mart, which is CoolPad's version of an app store, since obviously there isn't a Windows CE app store installed. So if we take a quick look, most of the stuff is still in Chinese since this phone was intended for the Chinese market. If we zoom in a little bit, we have a few different categories. You do need to be connected to the internet for uh, the best experience here, and you can download some ebooks. Uh, you can see it's definitely a little bit sluggish, but it works. I can download various titles by authors. I can also download movie titles if I wanted to albums in addition to Flash, which is games, so it uses pretty standard Flash-based animation games that are nowhere near as realistic as modern games that we have on Android, but it works. And there's also some um, images and other files that you can download from their very limited store. But at least they did think of you know popping in a store. The most interesting thing here is a launcher-based page, which is similar to Android. You can download some themes. There's even an, an iOS-based theme, which you know really rep replicates the look of an older iOS device. There's also ratings that you can look at, and of course, downloading it, you can just tap on the key over here. So very interesting that they designed a proprietary app store just for this phone. Finally, there's access to a basic web browser. There's actually quite a few different browsers built in. Um, some of them are a little stronger than others. This one has a, a decent, uh, you know, email client built in. It's called eSurfing. This one is just www is really just an Opera mini browser and there is access to a uh, taskbar that I can use to enter a URL. You can see the on-screen keyboard is tiny, especially for the size of your fingers, and that's maybe where a stylus will come into place. But you can peck at most of these keys and also hold to get a larger view, uh, which is a software trick that they incorporated. Still, it's a little bit hard to type uh, very quickly on this phone. There is an accelerometer, but you can only have access to the accelerometer in the media gallery, which is a little bit limiting. Still, this is a decent browser and probably the best bet if you are connected to Wi-Fi or 3G and you have to very quickly load up a few news pages or something of that sort, since playing back YouTube videos won't work on this browser. There's also access to the regular browser down below here called SirWAP, and this one relies on 3G connectivity, but it's uh, not as good as the Opera Mini experience you get here. There's also an alarm clock that you get so that you can see that emulates the iOS experience as well, but it actually works decently. You can add more clocks, you can um, search through time zones. In addition, there's a stopwatch function on here that works pretty well. There's also a countdown timer that works as well. There's also a customer uh, service app, which uh, you can, allows you to really quickly email their customer service, look at your warranty information, as well as call them in their hotline. So that's an interesting app that they built in. Finally, there's a camera app and also an album and a player. So if we look at the album here, you can see that there are quite a few sample images that they popped onto here, including wallpapers and advertisements for some of their um, other phones, and the gallery here supports again the accelerometer, which is actually surprisingly swift. It uh, pretty quickly rotates back and forth between the orientations for a 2009 smartphone. And you can see that some of these wallpapers aren't that bad. You can actually customize these and uh, pick the one that you want for your device. You can also go through and long hold to bring up some of the Windows CE options. You can kind of see the remnants of a desktop operating system here in the places like sending it using Bluetooth, emailing it, attaching it as an as a email, MMS, and the sort. I can also edit this image if I want to quickly uh, you know, change the properties of how it looks like. So going back here, I can swap again into this image gallery and look at some of the advertisements. Again, this phone does have GPS on board, although it lacks a navigational map or software, so you do have to download your own Google Maps suite, maybe drag it into the phone's memory if you want to do some more extensive uh, you know, navigation with it. But you can see again some of the catalog of phones that, that CoolPad came out with at the time, and the N900 was the flagship or the top of the line device at the time, so it was meant as their premium phone that uh, competed with other smartphones on the market, but obviously it wasn't quite as polished or as refined. In terms of player, there are a few other um, interesting things. It kind of looks like a Sony phone now, which is 
um, interesting. But if I go into videos, I can look at some of their demo videos. Some of them are just uh, video samples about the N900, including their ads and promotional videos at the time. The speaker is actually quite loud, surprisingly. I can change the volume here. And this is a video about the press release they had of the N900, which actually seems like a pretty fancy event. Um, I can scrub between the video. It supports MP3 WMA. Files up to 720p will play back without too many issues. There's also a notepad, which is separated, and this one allows you to doodle and draw on the display, so that's kind of an interesting utility. I can also erase and add different colors if I wanted to and go back. Let's not save this. And finally, there is what's called a Panda Reader, which is an ebook reader uh, app that gives me access to a few popular Chinese titles, although it supports any text files without too many issues. If I look in my library, there's access to quite a few that I can select through. It's a little bit sluggish, though, so if I select this, this is called the Three Kingdoms, which is a pretty classic Chinese text. I can open up perhaps a sample text and kind of swipe my way between the pages as such, like a real book. So not bad for a very basic um, ebook reader experience. So let's tap on the or hold on the key here just to go back. You can also add bookmarks and notes if you wanted to. So it was a decent um, app that they built onto this phone. Finally, there's a GPS based app that tested the GPS antenna services. What's called Office is really just a basic PDF and Word uh, viewer that's that's uh, kind of been repackaged, but it works if you want to do some light productivity on the go. Search, which takes you to Bing and Google as a quick search client, and there's also a, a, a kind of network options on more utilities that should be labeled under settings really instead of being a separate app but uh, again in settings you can see that it does offer kinetic scrolling and there's access to things like themes that you can customize on lock screen you can customize in terms of what's being displayed you can also change the theme in terms of the the effect of the desktop so instead of having a cube like effect you can change it to have a flat or a turning page which is again very reminiscent of um, similar uh, you know, Android-based phones that we have today in terms of their launcher packs. So this is an interesting twist. So I'm going to change the theme to popular, and this emulates iOS, as you can see, with how the icons are displayed instead of what was there before. And some of the icons in terms of how they're labeled have changed once again. Swapping to the next page, we have access to, again, a more mismatched page of functions, including Bluetooth. There's a separate folder for your games. Basic games built in include chess and Sudoku. Um, obviously it supports more flash based games depending on how much you want to download and pop into a memory card. And there's also backup. There's also a barcode scanner that you can use to scan business cards and save it. There's also Power Word, which is really just a dictionary that translates between Chinese and English, pretty useful for the intended demographic. A UC web browser, which is again a competitor to Opera Mini, so not really sure why there's five or six browsers built onto here, but at least you have a few options. There's a calculator on here that you can use, swaps between scientific mode as well. A file browser and a call filter, which uh, kind of deletes any spam messages for you. And essentially that's it. The next page gives you a self-test so you can call yourself. Um, there's also again a CoolPad warranty info app manager and goes into settings again. So that's basically it. Uh, down below here you have access to four apps that basically doesn't change no matter what page you're on since they're going to be your primary apps including the dialer pad that you see here which is pretty large in terms of how the icons are optimized. A contacts list, an SMS text message list that I can type out messages, and also an email client located at the bottom here. So these are fairly nicely thought out and standard uh, in terms of how they're laid out for a smartphone of 2009 and not too many uh, notable differences in that sense. So all in all, I have to say that the CoolPad N900 is an interesting phone. Um, in terms of connectivity, you do have all the options of a regular uh, high-end smartphone from GPS, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi to 3G connectivity back in the day. And its design and hardware is not bad at all. I have to say that for a Windows CE phone, they did a surprisingly good job of covering up the limitations and the rough edges of a desktop uh, user interface. And there's almost no traces at all of Windows CE. You really have to dig quite deep into the settings to quite, to look at a Windows CE-like desktop view. And you can obviously tweak and hack it or download more programs if you want to expose the Windows CE running underneath. Um, but all in all, I have to say that it's a decent unlocked phone for a 2009 device. There's not too much integration with other phones on the market, um, but if, it definitely was an interesting device. And picking it up here in 2017, 
Mostly, I'm just interested by the fact that Coolpad went for a nearly proprietary operating system that has rarely been used on a smartphone in the past um, on their N900 series, which, again, takes design elements from Sony, LG, and Samsung and pops into their one device um, as their, quote, flagship for 2009. So an interesting throwback review of a phone that I doubt many of you guys have seen or even heard of, but still an interesting phone as part of Coolpad's so far limited history. So thanks for watching this interesting throwback video here at OS Reviews of the Coolpad N900.